I'm more interested in two things, human beings and close-up. Many people like to see things from a distance, mountains, maybe street scenes, people at a distance on the beach, in a marketplace. I somehow want to bring them close. I even, when I'm doing, uh, if I'm doing a landscape, I want to see a close-up of the tree and the rocks. When I was a kid, seven years old, and I remember the very moment that uh, it happened when my dad showed me a, a drawing, and uh, which I've kept, a drawing of uh, of a actor side view and I looked at it and I can remember as if it happened seconds ago I said to myself at that moment this is what I want to do for the rest of my life and uh, from that moment on that's all I could do is draw you can't learn anything until you do it over and over again and the minute you are drawing and other artists can relate to this the minute your drawing becomes like breathing and walking and then you develop as an individual. But until that moment happens, you know, uh, it's strictly basics, drawing and understanding and, and making your eye and hand coordination. When you see somebody, when I see you standing there, somebody standing, a, 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 a tree, when I'm able to make my hand obey my eye in putting down what I see in front of me, that's when things start to happen. I found for myself pastels, I get my hand on it and I can put it right there, I can wipe it with my hand, I can manipulate it, uh, move it around. It's much more amenable to my attitude. The painting is really uh, just an illusion. It is two-dimensional and you're giving it a third dimension. You know movement in a, in a picture, when you think of movement, see there she's very stationary, not moving one little bit. But you can make a painting move by having diagonals in it such like this. Here's opposing diagonals coming that way, going up that way. It's also interesting when you talk about contrast. I think contrast is one of the most important things in art and oftentimes you'll put the darkest dark against the lightest light because the eye will go to that area. If you make, uh, if the eye doesn't go to areas where contrasts are, are light, like this, uh, this against this is not very strong. This value here or tone is not strong against that tone. The eye doesn't go to that. It goes to the crisp, extremely opposing uh, the contrasts of, of value, black against white. The eye immediately goes to that. Things about art is that, uh, as opposed to a photograph, is that you can, if you soften an edge, the eye doesn't go to that edge. The eye always goes to the edge that is the crispest. For instance, right up in here, where the hair is, is strong against the dark with the light, but the eye, does not, uh, the edge, if the edge is softened, the eye will, uh, will not be attracted to that point, which is, is exactly what the artist is after. Edges also uh, give it something, if something is curved, an edge will help to give it that curving, going away feeling. Uh, edges, incidentally, in shadows should be softened. Many artists will do sharp edges in shadows, when you're looking at uh, at a scene, you should your eye should go into either the light or the dark of the scene. And if the light goes in, if your eye looks at something light, say the light side of a person's face, peripherally the shadow side is blurred and very diffused. There's three important things to remember about a shadow: should not have strong color, it should not have sharp edges, and it should not have texture. Those three things. It should be the accompaniment to the melody which is in the light, more opaque uh, side of the face where the light shines. And this is also uh, the way uh, art should be in landscapes and still lifes and so on. Peripheral things are more diffused, the edges. And lost edges are wonderful. For instance, here, uh, her shoulder almost, and I may put a little more into that, but and this is, is quite incomplete. This is 60% done. This is the beginning, but I kind of got wound up on the face. But uh, here you can see the lost edge of the hat against the shoulder, her dark shoulder. That's lost and more diffused. But the mind's eye of the viewer, no matter how unsophisticated, uh, understands that the brim of the hat goes around there and the shoulder goes there. They don't have to be told that. We don't have to put a line in there. Oh, we better put a line in here so people can see that there is a top and edge to the shoulder. So what is not there is as important as what is there. Here's a black. Now I'm going to make this nice and strong and dark in here. And I'll lighten this up here a little higher. 
the forehead so that you can see where the forehead stops. That's incorrect. This sharp line here destroys the mystery of that area that should be diffused and pushed in uh, as a shadow under the hat. And by making that sharp out there destroys and gives it an amateurish look. This here should be diffused entirely. The edge all the way down the forehead, right in there, should be diffused. As you can see, uh, the hair, you should keep it soft, the way the hair, when it touches the face, that area should be quite soft in there. The shadow going around the chin. Uh, the eyes, the whites of the eyes, for instance, don't make those white. White is this color right here. See how much whiter that is than the eyes? And yet, you know those are white eye, whites of the eyes. Yet they're much darker simply because they're in the shadow there. It's all illusion, and that's the beauty of art. The artist edits. Artists have to have a real, cheery, positive, optimistic attitude. Must. It's a must. Number one. Optimism. Faith.